what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Siberia ROM on this device. Yes I have tried the Siberia ROM earlier but right now I just wanted to see how is the state of this ROM. Let me show you the about section first and in the Android version as you can see on top we have the Siberia logo and the Android version is 10 of course the Siberia OS version is 3.7 the security patch is of May 5th, 2020, the latest one. The stock kernel over here is the Soviet immensity kernel and you can see the build date from here which is 16th May 2020 build. Now let me talk about the flashing procedure. Yes, this is based on OSS vendor, not MIUI vendor. So you can just wipe cache, Dalvik system, data and vendor then just flash the ROM with gapps because like the ROM does not include gapps inside the like normal build. So you have to flash gap separately. Then you can flash FTP disabler if your storage is decrypted like me. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can follow this pixel experience flashing guide, which is based on OSS vendor 2. And that would work like similarly with this ROM. You just need to flash gapps on this Siberia ROM. Now let's talk about the stock launcher, shall we? Let's go into the settings. This is the quick step launcher present by default here. And if you go into MISC, as you can see by default, there is this double tap gesture enabled, which is double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. And this works flawlessly. Notification gestures and stuff is there. Let me go back to the app drawer. We have show icon labels in drawer and then allow to line labels in drawer. And if I go into the home screen settings, we have the enable Google feed integration. This sometimes does work, sometimes doesn't. Kind of weird, like sometimes it just doesn't go to the Google's discover page. The search bar option is there, you can have that. And inside icons, we have the icon packs. You can like install any icon pack separately and use that with this launcher and add icon to home screen notification dots, etc. is there. Now to the left of the home screen, we of course have the Google Discover page, but I have seen it sometimes not appearing, but most of the time it stays there. So I don't have much complaint over here. And one thing that I do not like over here is that like on the app drawer, you cannot disable this suggestions panel which is kind of a bummer like even in the settings of this quick step launcher there is no option to disable the suggestions i guess or i couldn't just find it double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen does work super fine as you just saw now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed over here let's do it again for a couple of times it doesn't work let's try it again so yep the fingerprint scanner for me is not like too good like the pixel experience or evolution x roms as you are noticing it's just like rejecting my finger so yeah the fingerprint scanner is just like not too much reliable that i can say but yeah it's not too bad like it was earlier with all other roms like it didn't even unlock once but yeah sometimes after two to three tries it does unlock now let's talk about the stock camera over here. Let's go into this camera and this as you can see is the MIUI camera present by default or the ANX camera. You can go to the video mode and you can see we do have the vlog mode over here. The highest settings possible over here is 1080p 60fps not like 4k 60 which is kind of weird those things are not there. Slow motion option is there up to 960fps and in terms of the front camera and stuff as you can see the front camera does open fine not a problem and it shows up the light and stuff now i have also installed google camera 7 if you don't have this google camera you can like install this apk separately you can click on the card right here for the settings and stuff for this google camera 7 this is how the stock in call ui looks like and as you can see we do have the call recording option and stuff and vault e calls and view wi-fi is working fine over here too so that's not a problem now let me show you the quick settings panel and of course you can swipe down for the quick setting panel from the home screen like this anywhere as you can see over here i have added this fps info so it does show up the fps over here on the top like left side over here as you're noticing and it does like work super fine that's not a problem now let me show you the screen recorder this is how it looks like kind of looks like oxygen is a screen recorder but i think it's a little bit tweaked and here you can change the audio source to disabled system audio microphone etc and then you can set the orientation to portrait automatic or landscape so that's good and here you can set the frame rate to 30 or 60 fps as you like it and then show floating window show taps etc is there for the screen recording option and the only feature which is missing over here in my opinion is the brightness control gesture by sliding a finger on the status bar that is simply not here except for that there are too much customizations in here 
So let's jump into the customizations. But before that, let me tell you the DRM info shows as level one over here. So that's not a problem. You can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p as this is an Indian union DRM info stays as, as like level one and Google Pay works right out of the box and other banking apps should work too. So you don't need to worry about banking apps. The widgets and stuff in the home screen does work fine. Now let me go into the settings and here we get the Siberia settings and in here we have all the customizations. You can go into the system, we have general fix, pocket detection, wake up on charge, CRT animation or the like screen of animation. You can choose or you can use the default or scale. Then we have charging animation, ADB notification enable screen stabilization for some reason. And then we have the use framework values. You can like set status bar padding and stuff from here. Inside animations, we have the whole UI animation just like this and you can change the list view animations too. Then we have the quick toggles animation, flip or rotate, that's pretty much it. And here in the buttons, we have the power menu option and here you get the advanced reboot option. So let me show you, if you tap on restart, you do get the advanced reboot option. You can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot from here. Now, let me go back. We have the playback control or stuff like that. And here inside notifications, we have the battery light settings and the notification LED on the like front camera over here, the pop-up camera does work fine while charging and stuff. So that's not a problem. Inside notification light, you can have the power app kind of customization. Then we have toast app icon and stuff, ambient music ticker, edge lighting option is there. It does work. I have set this edge lighting repeat count and you can also change the edge lighting color from here. So we have pretty much in-depth control over everything almost. Now let me go to the dialer settings here we have the vibrate on connect call waiting and disconnect and then pulse on incoming call flashes the like flashlight of course while you are receiving an incoming call so yeah and inside aggressive battery we have the auto enable battery saver and stuff since a block per package then we have the gaming mode if you want this feature you can use that let me go back to the panels we have the status bar settings and inside status bar items we have the headset bluetooth extra icons we have the battery style i have been using it with the big dotted circle kind of icon as you are noticing on top over here and then we have the battery percentage position you can choose it to enable or inside the icon then we have the battery percentage when charging and stuff and clock options are there so you can like set the clock position to left center or right just like this as you are noticing but if you put it to center if you are noticing closely it does like do weird stuff with the network kind of monitor over here so yeah kind of weird we have the network traffic indicator of course over here which i'm using and i had to change the single net font size to 20 dp and i have changed some couple of settings to like make it appear on the status bar we have the show 4g instead of lte and then there is the volte icon and stuff then select volte icon you can like choose any kind of volte icon from here plethora of options are there and we have the status bar showing up option on the lock screen too. You can disable that if you want to. Now inside heads up, we have the heads up notification disabler. Battery percentage and stuff is there for the notification panel. We can choose the quick pull down to right or left. Then some like more quick setting toggle customization is there. Quick setting tiles like tint and stuff is there if you want that. Background blur is there if you want that and you can customize the blur intensity too. And then we have some more features. Let me go back to the navigation bar. We have the invert layout and stuff if you are using two or three button navigation. Now inside lock screen, we have the lock screen shortcuts, fingerprint authentication, vibration, error vibration, etc. The cool thing is it does show up the charging info on the lock screen while charging and stuff. So yeah, that pretty much helps a lot. And you can see like if your phone is actually fast charging or not, of course. And here we have the FOD icon picker or the fingerprint scanner icon picker. We have these many options as you are noticing and pretty much a lot of options but again the fingerprint scanner for me is not perfect now inside this fod pressed state behavior we have the icon like color which emits the light from the fingerprint scanner of course and it's by default set to usually cyan then we have icon white solid color usually green and stuff then we have show on lock screen weather and stuff and yes this is how my lock screen looks like let me show you as you can see it looks pretty cool Right now, as you just saw, it unlocked like with one single try. Then we have media artwork and stuff, music visualizer on the lock screen. Inside gesture, we have swipe to take screenshot and screen of power button torch. Double tap to sleep on the status bar and lock screen as well. And this works super fine, no issues. Then we have about Siberia ROM. Now let me show you the screenshot quickly. As you can see, this is the OnePlus kind of screenshot gesture. It does work with the like long kind of screenshot. And yeah, you can use this screenshot feature and you can edit and add like uh, doodle and something if you want that 
Now let me talk about one more thing and here if you go into the mobile network you of course have the Wi-Fi calling but by default inside access points I couldn't find this GeoNet access point so I had to add it manually but like by default you get this and this like these two up top and bottom one so yeah by default mobile data was not working I was like what the hell is happening and inside battery we have the like battery temperature and stuff then screen on time of course and you can tap over here to see the full usage the battery life should be pretty good you can get about seven plus hours of screen on time easily the battery life over here in this room should be pretty amazing now let's go into the display settings we are we have the brightness level and stuff dark theme you can schedule it and even night light you can schedule this live display option is there so color calibration mode and stuff is there let me go back we have styles and wallpapers and you can customize a theme from here and you can set the lock screen like clocks from here as you are noticing we have this one this one this one pretty cool like clock customization for the lock screen itself let me go back and then inside styles and wallpapers you can set the grid kind of thing 5x5 5 4x4 5, 4 4, etc and inside wallpapers we have this like siberia wallpaper by default of course looks pretty cool it has this siberia logo and it shows android 10 we have the colors option which by default set to like boosted you can choose it to natural saturated and adaptive etc and here we have the lock screen display by the way i have tried the always on display turning off and the screen of a pod just does not work for me let me show you as you can see right now if i tap over here it does not wake up the screen or like use the fragment scanner but the double tap to wake does work super fine over here that's not a problem in this rom earlier i was facing that with the pixel experience rom but right now the double tap to wake works super fine and here in the ambient display we have the always on display and stuff again and then if you scroll down we have the dc dimming feature if you need this and then we have the accent colors you can choose between these many accent colors plethora of options are there for the accent colors so i don't have a problem with it and headline and body fonts are there you have bunch of fonts too as you are noticing a lot of fonts are there and you can also change the icon shapes to these many options now let me go back to the sound settings and here we have the vibrate for calls if you scroll down we do have the audio direct but as you can see it's not opening right now i think i have to connect the headphone or something for this but yeah it does work i have tested it i have like set that to like youth edition and the sound via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well was pretty cool it was fairly loud and the clarity was good enough and here we have the screenshot touch vibration touch sound etc like charging vibration and stuff disabling option lastly yes we do have the face unlock over here you do not need to worry let me quickly set up the face unlock so yeah the face unlock setting up was quick now let me just try it as you can see i don't have to swipe up from the lock screen if i go into the lock screen and as you can see it unlocks automatically so yeah the face unlock is fairly fast and simple i don't have an issue with it now from this in display fingerprint scanner as you can see i have the screen of fingerprint turned on but it does not work for me maybe i did something wrong while flashing but yeah it does not work for me but it may or may not work for you guys and inside this system panel we have the system updater and it shows this cool Siberia OS like logo up here shows Raphael version 3.7 you can check for system updates from here of course and if you are encrypted I guess you can install the like update from here too now let me go to the gestures inside system navigation we have gesture navigation let me show you the settings this is how it looks like you cannot change this navigation bar pill size or something but if you, you can go to the advanced kind of gesture settings you can have the haptic feedback extended swipe action and stuff these kind of features are there okay so you can change the handlebar size my bad you can change this like navigation bar pill so that was a wrong info sorry guys and here we have the two and three button navigations so that's cool let me go back we have the front camera sounds and i have it disabled you can like turn it on if you'd like now let me talk about one bug that i have faced which was weird like after keeping the phone for idle in charging for the whole night and when i woke up in the morning and like took the phone in my hand i see everything is lagging so i thought of like checking the test ufo website and with that i saw like the fps is dropping or the refresh rate of the screen is dropping to 30 hertz or 30 fps which was kind of a lot weird than other roms i never faced this kind of bugs in most recent roms or recent times but yeah this thing happened to me so i thought why not i'll tell this to you guys and the headphone volume button bug is also there like if you connect a headphone which has the volume rockers with the like headphones volume rockers you cannot control the volume over here by the way the volume panel looks pretty cool over here as you are noticing it has kind of this boxy look and while you scroll like on this volume panel it gives you a haptic feedback which feels really really nice 
I think this feature should be in all other ROMs and this volume panel I do really like and you can like set the phone into vibrate or silent from here and the animations do look amazing and here we also have the live caption mode so that's pretty cool. Here is the Android and Geekbench score of this ROM and the gaming performance and stuff should be pretty good enough over here you can play on the highest settings possible and the whole performance of the UI normally feels great. So thank you so much for watching this video guys that was my impressions on the Cyberia OS latest build. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the Cyberia OS on the Redmi K20 Pro. So that's been it guys thank you so much for watching this video again give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel now if you have not yet this is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye now. Thank you.